by reading a message from the book Steps of Life, a message by Albino Teixeira through the medium Chico Xavier, what we suffer the most. And the message says, what we suffer the most in the world, it is not the difficulty, it is the discouragement to overcome it. It is not the trial, it is the despair before suffering. It is not the idleness, the illness. It is the dread in receiving it. It is not the unhappy relative. It is the resentment in having them in our family circle. It is not failure. It is the stubbornness in not recognizing our own errors. It is not reproach. It is the wounded pride. It is not temptation. It is the voluptuousness to experiment with its suggestions. It is not old age. It is the love for appearances. As it is easily noticed in the solution to any problem, the worst, the worst problem is the burden of afflictions that we create, develop, and sustain against us. So we invite everyone to pray. Let's make an exercise. Prayer as an exercise of mind over matter, control of the mind, focusing on our connection with God that gives us life as we speak. Breathing in and out. We feel your presence, dear Lord, and we're so happy to know of your existence. We feel the connection with your messengers who have prepared this therapeutic session with love and diligence. We open ourselves to reorganize our minds, getting rid of our torments, resolving our inner conflicts, to finally make a decision, the decision to be good. To do the good at all times. As we feel your invitation, we wanna pray for those who have their names in the book of prayer. We pray also for all of our families. And for those who are having a hard time dealing with harmony, especially those who are feeling hatred and planning on avenging, we, play, we pray that they know that they are your children invited to a new life. And we hope that they understand 
that for every action, there is a reaction. Planning on sowing love and harmony. We ask for your guidance. Feel your protection as you grant us the permission to this therapeutic educational session. So be it. All right, friends. So today there's no lesson. Your parents have received an email saying that there are no lessons for until September. But let's not forget, we are revamping the program to another level, always progressing. When we start in September, there will be a few changes. Only those who register can participate. And there are rules of attendance. Otherwise, we cannot make it a good program. So, the parents will come on next week at 10 a.m. Parents of children four and up, including teens, of course, from four to 18, to have a meeting with us. So we're going to explain the program. We're going to explain the the rules of engagement and the wonderful news of what we're going to do ahead. As we say, our lessons inside are not a daycare. They are actually much deeper than sometimes what we do here for the adults and it's more important than when they go to school to be sincere because when they go to school they learn about math history but they don't learn about the most important things which is the moral part so if going to school is a must coming to this program i i don't need to say if it's a must or not Responsible parenthood will lead us to understand that that program, it's about our ethical, moral attitude in life. It's going to save lives in the future. We are dedicated to the educators, are dedicated to make this a good experience for everyone. So next week, we have a form here. We're going to pass it around. Right, Daisy? We're going to pass it around for you to sign up and tell us keep your email out. We, we can no longer make this an exception because we need continuity to make the program successful. Okay? So, talking about this today, we're going to talk about the law of society. And Ms. Kerr is going to talk to all of us. Everybody can participate when she asks a question, no matter your age. Even baby media can participate if she wants. Okay? We can all participate. Those who are online, feel free also to ask your questions. Probably we only see it at the end because when we share the screen, we can see exactly what's going on there. All right? So Kerr is going to lead us into a very deep reflection for 30 minutes before we start the process. So let us already begin with a question, everybody. Who knows where the law of society comes from? Virginia? Exactly, God, beautiful. So it's a divine law. What happens if we decide to break this law? We become Virginia? Criminals, criminals before God. So even though 
human law may not register this as a crime before God, it is a crime. So God knows literally that we need to be reminded of the divine code of conduct, our moral ethical code. Where is this code registered? In our Virginian consciousness, yes. And we need reminders. So Kardec is helping us by bringing it all back to us in the Spirit's book. So today we are going to study the law of society together. In question 766, Kardec asks, is societal life natural? The answer from the illuminated spirits is quite surprising. One second, friends. They say certainly, so there's no room for doubt. No room for discussion. We cannot say, yeah, maybe, sometimes. No, they are very direct. They say, certainly. And they remind us, because we already know it, but they remind us that God has made us to live in society. So whenever any of us have the impulse to be in isolation, we are swimming against God's current. So if we are teens and we decide, oh, we just want to be in our room, we don't need to see anybody or talk to anybody, we'll do our own thing, mm -mm. God hasn't created any of us to do our own thing. God has created us to collaborate with one another. And they explain, the spirits explain why to us, because spiritism is reason and faith. So they give us the reason so we can boost our uh, faith by knowing God's law. So the spirits explain that God has not given us all the faculties we need. So we have to rely on one another for collaboration. We are divinely designed to collaborate with one another. Master Jesus, our guide and model, already personified this law so beautifully that he did everything in teams. He had a beautiful team of 12 disciples, and he's calling on all of us to collaborate with him as well. Then the spirit, Kardec asks another important question. Kardec asks, by living in society, do people only obey a personal choice and sentiment, or is there a greater divine purpose to this? And the answer is, yes, there is a greater purpose, because we cannot progress alone and we are meant to progress. So when people say, oh, I'm just the way I am, it's either my way or the highway, mm -mm -mm, red flag, we're going against progress. We are supposed to change and to evolve. God has designed us to change and to evolve. So there isn't either my way or the highway. We're not meant to be our way. We're meant to be God's way. We are designed to progress. And why is it that we cannot progress again? Because we do have all the faculties. So we need to connect with each other. For example, if we have languages, we can who is a language. So we exchange and knowledge. And in that way, we grow. So, depend on our relationships to progress. What kind of relationships do we cultivate? Hmm. Do we cultivate relationships with the world? Or think about this question 
continue for their station. Can a way to where central patch for us morning is we call to relationships for the one break this down together so at the end we can answer this question for ourselves as we evaluate where we are. Oops. So in order for us to evaluate where we are, we need to see what relationships for the world look like. What are their characteristics? Let us see together. Do we cultivate relationships based on convenience? What is convenience? Is when we become friends with someone because we need their approval or because we're looking for a promotion at work. So we calculate, oh, we are going to be friends with this person because this person knows the boss and they can put in a good word for us and we are gonna get exactly what we want. Or, are we friends with someone because of social status? For example, at school, these kids are popular. Everybody talks to them. They are in every event at school. They are invited to all the parties. So we don't really know who they are, but yeah, we want to hang out with them because we want to be cool. If we are friends with people just to be cool, then we are looking for status. And that's not why Jesus, our guide and model, made friends. What else? Are we looking for financial gain? Oh, if I spend time with this friend, they will take me to the movies and they will pay for me. Or they will take me to a restaurant and invite me. Or they have a car and I don't, so they will take me around. Or they have something I need, so yeah, I'm gonna spend time with them. So if these are our motivations, we are not really spending time with our friends for their sake. We are spending time with our friends for what they can give us. So if we choose our circle of friends or colleagues or partners, thinking of the advantages that they can bring to us, if we calculate our moves thinking, what is in it for me? Then, friends, we have moral addictions. We suffer from moral addictions. What are moral addictions? Selfishness, pride, indifference. And what is the problem with this illness of moral nature? They cause spiritual and, and moral blindness. So we become spiritually blind. And what does it mean to become spiritually blind? Is when we cannot see the needs of others. We only see ourselves. So question for us, in a period of 24 hours, how often do we talk about ourselves? How often do we, do we use I, me, or mine in a sentence? That can mathematically, statistically be a thermometer to show whether we are developing spiritual blindness. Because if we spend the 24 of the hours that God gave us thinking only about ourselves, we are being invited to readjust before spiritual blindness takes over completely. And spiritual blindness leads us to spiritual paralysis. Why? Because we just learned that we need others in order to progress. Without others, we cannot progress. So if we only think about ourselves and push others away in the process, 
we are stagnated, we are paralyzed, we don't regress because God is too good to allow us to go back in our progress, but we do stagnate. So we become spiritually blind and paralyzed, meaning we are unable to move forward in our progress. So what does spiritual blindness look like? In order to assess ourselves, we need to understand what the symptoms of spiritual blindness are. With that purpose in mind, we are going to bring uh, a little bit of a true case reported to us by the spirit Humberto de Campos through the mediumship of Chico Xavier found in the book Letters and Chronicles, chapter 6. This report brought to us by Alberto de Campos is entitled Tragedy in the Circus. This message will be available to us in English in the next edition of the Spiritist magazine. So pretty soon we will all be able to read the message in its entirety. Now, let us observe together through the report of Roberto de Campos how the law of cause and effect operates in our lives due to the dangers of spiritual blindness. So what are the symptoms that we have to watch out for? Everyone. First, let us understand the context of the case that Humberto de Campos reports. This case that Humberto de Campos reports takes place in the year 177 in Lyon. So we are referring to the primitive Christians. Marcus Aurelius says Humberto de Campos was the Roman emperor at the time. What did they do? What happened? They decided to murder the followers of the Christ because that was socially acceptable. Did you guys know that back then it was socially acceptable for the followers of the Christ to be killed? Yes, Virginia, right? You guys remember that that was socially acceptable. So what did they decide to do? they decided that they needed to take this a notch up. The high delegates of the emperor said, oh, we need to impress the emperor. So we, need, we want to do more than just simply murder the Christians. We want to impress the emperor. So what did they decide to do? They decided that during the traditional festivities of the time, if we read the book 2,000 years ago, we can see what the festivities were like. They decided to burn the Christians at stake for the first time. The method that they used to use, and children, women and children, women and children. Thank you, Vanessa, you're right. Yeah, specifically, thank you. They selected women and children to be burned at stake. Usually they threw them uh, to the beasts, but they decided they wanted to innovate. And they decided to select women and children to be burned at stake. So Humberto de Campos reports that there were many high delegates and women of high society that went about during the night to knock on the doors of Christians and take this ter horrible, horrific measure. So the following day after they were imprisoned, they were all killed, tragically. So what happens when we make a mistake? Do we know? According to the law of God, when we make a mistake, we create a knot, a vibratory knot 
in our parent spiritual body immediately. And God is so good that God created an internal alarm system for us. Better than the alarm systems that we often have at our homes. Much better. Because it's instantaneous. So the alarm system of their conscious already was set up. They didn't realize it then because they were very, very spiritually blind. But what does Umberto de Campos tell us? 18 centuries later, can you guys believe it? 18 centuries later, all those who were involved in causing this ma massacre, they found themselves in a circus in the city of Niterói, Rio de Janeiro, in the year of 1961. And what happened then? The circle, circus caught on fire. And everyone who was there died tragically, burned. Why were they burned? Because this is exactly what they had done in the past. But God is so merciful that they were not tortured. They were there having fun, experiencing family, uh, family moments. They weren't scared. So God allowed them to reap what they sowed, but with mercy. So this is the law of action and reaction in action. We need to remember, friends, that every single choice we make brings about a consequence. So before we make a choice, we need to think, Am I ready to deal with the consequence of my action? Because there's no skipping the process. This is a divine law. We cannot break the divine law. Divine law is immutable. So every time I make a choice, like being aggressive, like being disrespectful, like pushing people away from our lives, we need to think, do I really want to receive this? Because it will happen. So who's responsible for our serenity and happiness? We are. Because we will receive what we give. Question for us right now in the present time. Are we using our relationships to offer to them what we would like to receive? Do we see our relationships as an opportunity to give what we would like to receive? Because the other is our bridge to God. How are we constructing this bridge? Are we constructing it with love and compassion and understanding and forgiveness? Or are we still suffering from this incredible selfishness that we see here? Food for thought. So what are the signs of spiritual blindness that result from the psycho psychopathy that we see here? The people who committed this atrocity were psychopaths. Does everybody know who a psychopath is? A psychopath is someone who has no empathy. So we have a scale. Empathy is when we have the ability to understand the other, to put ourselves in some, someone else's shoes. Psychopathy is in the opposite end of the scale when we are fully unable to recognize the other. And this is a mental illness of grave proportion. So when we are spiritually blind, we better believe that this comes from psychopathic tendencies. And this is a vicious cycle. 
So let us look at the symptoms of spiritual blindness so we can analyze ourselves. The high officials in Lyon, in the case we just described, suffered from incredible cruelty. They were highly cruel. This is a symptom of spiritual blindness, cruelty. Why? Because they didn't see the followers of the Christ as human beings, just like them. They didn't see them as equal. Sometimes we do that in our own families as well. We are at home and we see that somebody's tired, that somebody needs help, and we say, no, not us. We have to take care of ourselves. Or we have a child under our care, that child needs love and attention, and we withhold it. That's cool. What is another sign of psycho psychopathy that leads to spiritual blindness? Pride. Pride. So, so far we have symptom number one, cruelty. Symptom number two, pride. Why? Because in the case reported by Umberto de Campos, the high officials held a false sense of superiority that prevented them from seeing the Christians as their equal. So when we see our friends as inferior to us, we are also suffering from the disease, the moral disease of pride. When we say, we got to be number one. We are number one. And we only talk about ourselves and our accomplishments all the time. Even as adults at work, sometimes we see colleagues and they keep on relating everything that they did and will do. That's the disease of pride that is blinding because it prevents us from seeing reality. This is no way for us to escape reality. This is why it's a moral illness, because we have reincarnated to embrace reality, not escape it. What is another sign of spiritual blindness? So this is our thermometer for us to measure whether or not we ourselves are suffering from spiritual blindness. What is another symptom of this illness of the soul? Indifference. Not seeing the Christians as equal to them led the high officials to be completely indifferent to them. So when we see people suffering and we say, oh, that's not with us, that's indifference. Like, for instance, when we see someone begging for help in the streets and we drive away thinking, ah, whatever, they're lazy, that's indifferent. Or when we see someone at school needing help, struggling with a task, and we say, whatever, that's their problem, it's indifferent. Or when we are at work and we see that someone even ask for our help and we say, oh no, we got our stuff to do. No way, Jose, that's indifference. God is inviting us, progress through this relationship, embrace the opportunity, and we are turning to God and saying, no, no, no. And why do we do this? Here comes symptom number four of spiritual blindness. Why do we do it? Because we are selfish. Just like the high officials in the year 177, we believe that we have the right to do certain things. They thought they had the right to murder the Christians. Sometimes we, we think that we have the right to only think about ourselves. So, 
let us think about the symptoms of moral cancer. There is a moral cancer. And let us see if we need treatment and in what stage we find ourselves. So what happens when we choose to remain spiritually blind and spiritually paralyzed without seeing the needs of others? What we suffer the most in the world, as Philippe read to us earlier today, is not because of the difficulty, but because of the discouragement to overcome it. Laziness, moral laziness. The obstacle is there exactly for us to develop that muscle. And again, we say to God, no, we don't want it, not now. Why? Because we prioritize our own comfort. This is dangerous, friends. We have reincarnated to experience discomfort. Our life has been designed to push us beyond our limitation because we are incarnated to progress. When we say, oh, we just want to stay the way we are, whatever, we are going against our reincarnatory plan. And we continue to suffer, not because that suffering is planned for us, but because we despair. When we experience an illness, it's not the illness that causes us to suffer, but our attitude toward, towards it, as Philippe read to us earlier today. So we are being invited, friends, to shift the paradigm through which we experience our lives. Not to see everything as a bother, not to have the uh, attitude of, I don't want to do it, forget about it. It's either my way or the highway. We've had this attitude for centuries. The case of Humberto de Campos is there to show it. This is the most precious reincarnation we have ever had because we've never had as many resources to awaken us. It is time to change. Master Jesus has invited us time and again. And here comes the invitation. It is time to change. But in order to change, we need to mature to the point where we are strong enough to make the decision. To make the decision to leave our comfort zones behind. So is there a cure for spiritual blindness is our central question today. Is there a cure for spiritual blindness? Let us learn with Master Jesus. Luckily, the answer is yes. There is a cure for spiritual blindness, yes. How do we cure ourselves? By cultivating relationships for the spirit, not for conveniences. How do we know how to do this? We follow our guidance model, Master Jesus. He, Master Jesus, is the governor of our planet so there is nowhere in this planet where he is not there is no way we can speak of spiritism without speaking of the christ because the christ is the foundation of spiritism he is spiritism one and the same Christianity and Spiritism are one and the same. Christ is the center of Spiritism. 
and he's at the center of everything in this planet. He's the way, the truth, and the life. So when we see friends saying, oh, let's take, let's not talk about Jesus, let's take Jesus out of the picture, there is no such thing. If we read the book on the way to the light, we see that everything in this planet has been planned by Jesus. This is a book by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier on the way to the light. The light. We see every stage of evolution that the earth has gone through and we see that all peoples and all messengers on earth have been sent by the Christ and worked under the guidance of the Christ collaborating with the Christ so there's no spiritism without Jesus there is a life on earth without Jesus because he is our governor Okay, all of us, more of the story, bottom line, bottom line, from which we cannot hide. Whether we like it or not, all of us are under his loving guidance. He vouched for each and every one of us to be reincarnated. So how do we break the vicious cycle of moral addictions? How do we cultivate relationships for the spirit? We follow the example of Master Jesus. How can we summarize the example of Master Jesus? The golden rule. Does everybody know the golden rule? We give to others what we would like to receive. So every day we can ask ourselves, are we giving to others what we would like to receive? Because if we do, we are definitely surrendering to love. This needs to be the basis of all of our relationships giving to others what we would like to receive. We have reincarnated to make this profound transformation for centuries, centuries on end. We prioritize relationships for convenience, thinking what is in it for me. But in this life, we have been given so many wonderful loving tools through Master Jesus, through Spiritism, with the Christ, always, that we now have the instruments we need to adopt a new paradigm, a new way of thinking and feeling with regard to our relationships. What are we being invited to learn in shifting this paradigm? Number one, we are being invited to understand others more than being understood. We are being invited to love others, number two, more, more than being loved. We are being invited to give more than to receive. And we are being invited to forgive more than to be forgiven for centuries. This paradigm was the other way around, upside down. In this life, we have been given the gift of the Christ again in order to shift this paradigm. This is how we make profound transformation. The profound transformation we are being invited to do is internal, not external. So, of course, who can we count on to make this transformation? Who models it for us? Who is the living example for us? Jesus. So, let us visualize the Master with us right now, at this very moment, lovingly looking into our eyes and asking us a question that he often asked 
us when he was incarnated on earth, the personification of love and kindness on earth. Let us visualize the master and listen to his sweet and loving voice asking us, do you want to be healed? One more time, do you want to be healed? Third time, do you want to be healed? Final question from the master. Let us visualize his serene and loving presence. Just like he uh, did when he was here. And let us hear his loving voice asking us kindly and compassionately, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let us now prepare ourselves for the process. We have to quiz. Yes, of course. Because of the children. Yes, go ahead. Let's quiz since we have a mixed crowd. Yeah. Right? Okay. The story that Miss Carol said. Who told the story? Who knows the name of the writer? Yes? Okay, thank you. Who was the medium? Yes, Rodrigo Chico Xavier. So he actually reported, he's not telling a story, he's reporting a true account. That happened in the year, yes, Christina, 177. Where was it specifically? Leon, no, okay. Back then, it was the Roman Empire. Today, Leon is part of which, which country? France. Yes. It's in the south of France. Who was born there that we know of? Yes, Kardec was born there. But that was way past, right? So if we see what's going on here. Yes, it's not coincidence. So they want to please the emperor. Like sometimes we want to please the boss or somebody, but we do things that are wrong. Like using religion for politics. This is wrong. Okay? No matter which candidate writing your name on the Bible to make sure that this goes places, no matter if you are right or left, it's wrong. Okay, you see, two millennia have passed almost, and people are still messing up with religion for political purposes. No, you see, people are still using Christianity to put the Christ down. Mm -hmm. We cannot allow it. We cannot allow it. So, let's go back. So they had a brilliant, quote unquote, decision. They used to have men and women, etc. But then they said, you know, we've never done this with children. What if we get children now and burn them at stake? A show. It's cruel, huh? Cruelty is also when we have our own children and we don't pay attention to their needs. I know here we have wonderful parents, but we're talking about Earth. So we need also to reach out to those parents who are not able to do it and alert them. Because whatever they are doing today to the children are affecting not only the children, the society, but also themselves in the future. So this was year 177, a tragedy happens, many lives go by, and 
and many of those people who are, yay, burn them at stake, they reincarnated in Brazil. What city was that again? Niterói. Niterói. For those who don't know, it's in Rio de Janeiro, right? And then they are there in a similar event to entertain themselves. And in three minutes, the circus goes on fire, scare explained. Tragedy. This was 1961. And we think, oh my gosh, that's brutal. But think about it. The law of God is of justice, love, and charity. The people who received what they have given, as Carol said, we have to give in order to receive. What they are receiving is not as brutal as it was in 1977. No. They were not humiliated before they died in the circus in Niteroi. They were really having fun. They were not separated from their family members on purpose. So you see how when the law of action and reaction happens, justice is always combined with love and charity. Because if we were experiencing exactly what we did to others, friends, it would be unbearable. So when we go through whatever we go through in our lives, let's rest assured that we are receiving just a light touch of what we've done. Because what we did is even worse than what we're experiencing. And the history books tell us about it. And if the history books don't tell everything, the spiritist books do. So that's why we are going to finalize saying we need to read the books in order to enlighten ourselves and to surrender ourselves to the designs of on high and to do exactly what Carol mentioned at the very end, the healing direction, the golden way. Let us meditate on this as we have some questions, yes. So let me see if I can phrase my question. Uh, so in this case, the people, um, so I get it that there was a lot of compassion and love, but in the way how just pretty much died, they were burned, similar, right? Um, but then if they had had the opportunity to act in good of others or transform in some ways, um, would that be probably a better evolution for their soul versus... I don't know, it just, it, it's just I like, understand. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. Is it the only way? Okay, so let me give you a reference, okay? So we can go there and say the book Evolution in Two Worlds, part two, chapter 19. When do we create predispositions to illnesses or to all these tragedies? Andrea Louise replies, when we make a grave mistake. But who tells us that we didn't make a grave mistake? We do, our conscience. Even if the people say, oh, no problem at all, come on, cheer up, let's do it. We inside know it's wrong, we flagged it, and we create, he says, in our spiritual body, a knot of disturbance. It's like we create a crystallization in our fair spirit. That crystallization there is vibrating like a magnet. It's attracting things that will make us attract people, situations, places. So it's not by chance that we're here in the United States. It's not by chance that we're living at this time in the United States. It's not by chance that some of us are related to Brazil or to Colombia or to 
the Philippines or other countries. There are reasons. And then our goal is to harmonize ourselves. How do we get rid of this crystallization? Two ways. Love. He says in the book, as Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, love covers a multitude of mistakes. But do we love? No, we don't want to love. We think love is about our family. Very selfish love, right? When we love our family, it's beautiful. But if we only love our families, that's selfishness. When we think that our family is more important than anybody else's family. When I think that my child is more important than anybody else's child. Not that type of love. We're talking about Jesus' love. Jesus never said, oh, I can't see you guys today because I have family commitments. We've never heard that he even prioritized his mom. And say, excuse me, now it's my mom's time. Come on, she's my mom. No, no, no. His mom had to come after him and be subjected to the same rules as everybody else. Of course he was loving to her, but he didn't make his love exclusive or privileged to her. That's the type of love we're talking about. When we reach that level, of course, these crystallizations go away, but we're far from it, so inevitably, we're going to attract, il attract illnesses, and illnesses are drainages of this. Only those who merit get sick. It's funny to say this, but it's true. Only those who deserve the flushing out of those crystallizations get sick. Not everybody's ready to flush it out. And sometimes to flush it out in a speedy way, we go through tragedies. So let's go back two weeks ago in Brazil when the plane fell. 61 people died. Did you know that one of the old ladies who died, she was very charitable. There was a video showing her last hug with her son before she entered the plane, before she went to the airport to embark in that trip. They say that she was very charitable. How come? Wasn't that enough? No. We need to do more than that. And is falling from the plane and dying a punishment? No. Is the death in the circus of Niteroi a punishment for those people? No. It's a natural byproduct of their collective choices. So since we have children here and teens, when you team up with your friends at school to do something, don't forget. No matter if you were the leader or not, you will receive the consequences. The same for all of us in life. Oh, but my family doesn't like that family. What can I do? Well, you can be the person who is going to reconcile. We can't excuse ourselves behind anybody else. Or we collectively, we will experience the reaction of our actions. So to really harmonize our spiritual bodies, prayer is not enough. Reading these books is not enough. Participating in all charitable actions is not enough. What is it important? The inner. Because if I come here, give the passes, and I don't love people, what's the point? It's just an act. If we come here and share this message, but I don't really care about the people who are in my life, what's the point? 
it won't harmonize my spiritual body. Makes sense now. So now that we know the mechanism, as Carol said, it's the inner. That's why Jesus' message is it's very easy. Love. Fabiana. I was going to say that I don't remember the book, you can quote the book, but uh, that sometimes we ask for so much guilt. We ask to live through the same that we caused. So it could be also in the rain current like when we ask for that. So we could can imagine like yes. killing women and children. So we want to go through the same just to clean our hair spirit. Exactly. How long did it take? Centuries. They reincarnated many times and not necessarily experienced any of it. But as Kardec reports in the Spirit's book, sometimes it's easier to come to terms with that disharmony by losing a finger than by making the effort of love. But we can choose every day to love more and be in greater harmony or love less and attract the needed consequences of our actions. The message is very hopeful, don't you guys think? There's no punishment. There's always an invitation, but look at the pandemic. We just went through the pandemic and we were hoping that people would come out of it more loving, more fraternal. Have we seen it? On the contrary, people giving up charitable causes to, oh no, now I need to think of myself. And then we are attracting mpox, flesh eating bacteria from Japan because we are resisting the call of love. So, I know we here in the center, we're not resisting the call of love. No. But we need to support the friends. When you go back to school tomorrow, pray tonight, friends, for your school. Pray for your teachers. Pray for your fam the families of the people there, whether they are your friends or not. May you guys be the light in your schools. And may all of our families pray for all of our schools. We'll do that specific prayer today because this new generation will be the generation that will make the world of regeneration. When they get to our age, the planet will already be officially in the world of regeneration. But how can we be there if we don't have new responses for old problems? So we have a mission at hand to support our society in the next steps. And only love us. Don't play video games that are violent. Don't watch programs that are violent. We are done with that. We are now opening a new phase on this. Dedicate to this. It open up and receive. We have been already. Of the Thank you.
In Jesus, let us see his faith us to love the Lord. That's our king. Yes, dear Jesus, we want to love you. We are here with you. Let's stay in that dialogue with you as we sustain the current for the works of the Spirit of Jesus.
Let us help one another, friends. Let us go by visualizing Master Jesus in front of us. Helping the spirit doctors by visualizing flowers of healing. Visualize them. Feel that they are giving to us these flowers. Bring them close to our hearts to heal our emotions, calming ourselves, bringing us a sense of serenity. Keep helping one another by visualizing the waterfalls of healing light showering us, displacing toxins that we no longer need, and inserting in our mental fields new hope and strength for new beginnings. 